Hi, a very good afternoon to all the friends in the air. Happy Chinese New Year to all the Chinese friends. Uh, my name is Fei Ai. Um, glad to know you and thank you for spending your time with us this afternoon. Today, it is my honor to be partner with Dr. Wee, our psychiatrist in Allen Hospital. Today, uh, in this warm weather and quiet celebration season. In this afternoon, we would like to share with you a topic on normal and abnormal eating habits. It is something about health and nutrition. Before we kick start with this topic, we would like to ask everyone a question. What is the most important thing in your life? Have you ever thought that it is probably your education? What about the purpose in life? Or could it be family? For those who are parents, your siblings, or you have a spouse or children. And those who are actually not yet married, still single, probably you treasure friendship. And those career men and women, you may chase after wealth, passion, power of determination and self-confidence. Or probably you just need some more time and rest for yourself and attain spiritual happiness or happiness from entertainment. So what is your answer? Some may actually share the same answer as me, which is about health. To be a healthy person, it is actually important to actually fulfill the six components of health. It is important to fulfill the needs of the emotional health, the physical health, social health, environmental health, spiritual health, and mental health. Lacking of any of the components, it is incomplete and it's hard to attain the condition that allow us to pursue our purpose of life. So in the nutrition perspective, how to expect of nutrition health is to eat a proper meals, nutritious foods, and that allow us to maintain health uh, and training on the cardiovascular endurance, the muscular strength, the muscular endurance, flexibility, and body composition. So do we have a choice to stay healthy? I would say the answer is yes or no. Yes, we have a choice if we are actually equipped with the knowledge and we have the condition to comply with it. No, if we are actually lacking of the knowledge, probably we are experiencing the inborn error or probably the diseases that we experience later in life and probably just having simple, as simple as a financial problem. The Ministry of Health actually guided us to stay healthy, we need to eat healthily. And the choices that or the messages that the government is actually giving us is 14 messages and we extracted some of it and they are eating the variety of food within our recommended intake, eat adequate amount of rice such as some cereal products and the tubers, eat plenty of fruits and vegetables every day, consume sufficient amounts of fish, meat, poultry, egg, legumes and nuts to consume adequate amounts of milk and milk products Limit our intakes of foods which are high in fat and minimize fats and oil in food preparation. To choose and prepare foods with less salt and sauces. And of course, to consume food and beverages low in sugar, as well as to drink plenty of water. When we are following these healthy guidelines, we are making sure that our body are equipped with all the nutrients that required by the body. Okay? The nutrients that we eat in large amount and we need in large amount are called macronutrients, whereas the nutrients that we need in smaller amount are called micronutrients. Macronutrient sources, one of them is called carbohydrates. It is important because when the carbohydrate converted into glucose, it provides us fuel for body cells, especially the brain cells and the cells of the nervous system. The brain cells doesn't store the glucose. We need it and it is high in demand. It is also important to ingest the carbohydrates because they help us in the metabolism of oxidative, which means it requires oxygen, and it also serves as a vehicle for important micronutrients and phytochemicals. Of course, it does help us to maintain our blood sugar level, 
and ensure our gut is actually integrated and function normally by providing us with dietary fiber. A lot of studies actually show that the nature of dietary carbohydrate is more critical on health effects rather than the quantity. And the healthy combination should be low in sugar and low in glycemic index. The Food and Agriculture Organization, as well as the World Health Organization, highlighted that the minimum amount of carbohydrate in our human diet is more than 50 grams per day for adults. And this is to avoid the ketosis. So what is ketosis? It is a metabolic adaptive sy sy symptoms or the uh, process that our body during the process uh, of the mean, when our body doesn't get enough food, the carbohydrates is not adequate in our diet, the body will burn the fat to produce the ketone and the ketones will provide us the fuel. It is important during the mean period as well as for the athletes because the athlete needs carbohydrate to supply as a main key fuel source for the exercise. And that depends, of course, on their sex, on the physical fitness of the individual, their total training load, energy expenditure, type of physical activity and the environment. Some athletes may need up to 6 to 10 grams per kilogram of body weight of the carbohydrate per day. So where do we get the carbohydrates from? It could be from the polysaccharides or the complex carbohydrates from grains, cereals and legumes. We also get it from a simple carbohydrates like fructose and glucose from fruit groups. We also get it from starchy vegetables like fructose and sucrose. And the other milk groups provide us with lactose. And the least that we should get is actually free sugars or added sugars from commercially produced or the restaurants which is added in the cooking. The second macronutrient that our body needs is called protein. Protein serves as a major component of body tissues. It helps us to build the body system in terms of regulatory system, nervous system, respiratory system, digestive system, skeletal system, and muscular system. It helps us to form regulatory compounds such as the hormones and enzymes. It also helps us to defend diseases by manufacturing antibodies. Especially during COVID pandemic, virus infections is actually quite scary and the antibodies is required to fight for this virus infection. It also helps us to attract water to maintain fluid balance within the various compartments of the body cells. It maintains the balance between acid and bases by actually releasing and also accepting the hydrogen ions in the body fluids. And last but not least, the protein is also being required to provide glucose when our body is not eating enough carbohydrate. So where do we get the food sources of protein? We get it from plant protein. We also get it from animal protein. The plant sources of protein could be from the peas, beans, legumes, nuts, seeds, and also vegetables. And whereas the animal protein, we get it from meat, poultry, the eggs, um, milk products, as well as the processed meat. Even for vegans, it is sufficient for the sources of protein to rely on the plant base. So the third macronutrient that we are talking about is fat. Why is it important to eat fat? We need about 30% in our total calories because the fat provides us with the essential fatty acid, which is not being able to uh, supply and also produce by our own body. And we need to get it from the food sources. The two main common ones are called linolenic acid, omega-6, and the other one is alpha-linolenic acid, omega-3. It is required for the synthesis of local hormones called eicosanoids, which regulate metabolism and inflammation. We also need fatty acids, the smaller molecules of fat, to form the structural components of biological membranes, as well as Fat is required to absorb vitamins which are fat soluble, such as vitamin A, D, E, and K. Vitamin A is important for vision health, reproduction health, bone health, and immune system. 
Vitamin D strengthens our bone by increasing the calcium absorption and also helping in immune system. Vitamin E as an antioxidant, helping in immune system as well, as well as flushes, flushes out the toxins. And vitamin K helping in blood clotting and bone health. So we also need some fat in our food so that it make it tasty and delicious, um, like what we have missed the fried, fried chicken at times. So the food sources of fat, we have divided them into separate fats. We get it from cooking oil, the butter margarine, the dressing, and it's also uh, uh, unseparated fats from the hidden sources, such as from plant or the meat products. And those macronutrients are providing us calories for our daily activities. The carbohydrate is providing us four calories per gram. The protein also giving us four calories per gram. The fat are providing double nine calories per gram. And alcohol does giving us some calories as well, which is seven, gram, uh, seven calories per gram. The alcohol taken in moderation, although has been found to have some beneficial benefits, such as reducing the heart event, but it is not safe because other harmful, harmful effects to the body are outweighing the benefits. So how do we know whether we are getting enough? Okay, some scientific papers compiled information and they did research and they came up with the tables called the RNI Formulation 2017, the recommended nutrient intake. So this is just um, an example Let's say I'm actually a female and actually in the age group of 30 to 59 years old and my physical activity level is considered moderately active during my working days. My requirement of calorie is 1900 and my protein is 52 grams. It is important to ingest sufficient macronutrients to allow us to, um, to maintain our physical activity at home uh, in the daily uh, daily activities, but we also require micronutrients. Dr. Lennis Pauling, the two-time Nobel Prize winner, said that you can trace every sickness, every disease, and every ailment to a mineral deficiency. These trace minerals are required in a very small amount, generally less than 100 mg per day, but they are vital and essential to a good health. So these 13 essential vitamins, the micronutrients, they are important because they serve as vital role in natural wear and tear of the body. They improve heart health, they aid in digestion, they maintain skin, hair, teeth, bone and vision function, they improve nervous system function, the normal growth and development, and also supply energy throughout the body. We have mentioned about the fat soluble vitamin, the ADEAK, and the water soluble vitamins are vitamin B and C. We also need minerals, the micronutrients, which are the substances in the body requiring a small amount, but help us in various body functions, serving as coenzymes and cofactors. Just to name a few, the calcium helps in the formation of bones and teeth. The ferrum helps in transportation of oxygen. Potassium helps us to regulate heartbeat. The zinc boosts the immunity of the body and heal the wounds. The iodine produces thyroid hormones, um, the phosphorus helping us to synthesize DNA and bone. Sodium regulates the body fluid and maintains pH balance. The copper works together with vitamin C and zinc to form the elastin, which is a skin protein, and also metabolizes iron, red blood cell, and hemoglobin. The selenium, which is very powerful antioxidant, when we act together with vitamin E, it serves as an antioxidant that helps to reduce the oxidation of the lipid and prevent the free radicals formation that damage in the body. So how do we know that we are getting enough of the macronutrients and micronutrients if you're not doing the blood test? So the first screening line is to check the body weight and the body height. We call that BMI, the body mass index, by using the weight in kilogram and divided by the height in meter squared, we will get the result of BMI. And this is applied to the adults more than 20 years old. So if you fall in the range of 
18.5 to 24.9, we are considered healthy. Um, and in the sense that we are actually with having the reductions of risk for all the diseases which are preventable, such as the type 2 diabetes, hypertension, dyslipidemia, and cardiovascular diseases. Getting underweight or with a BMI of less than 18.5, it could be posing some health risks as well, such as anemia, global mass, and eating disorders such as anorexia and bulimia. What about kids? We don't measure uh, just the BMI and using it to predict the condition of the health of the kids. It is not so reliable because it doesn't measure the fat storage, the protein and the carbohydrate storage of the kids that well. So in, check, in terms of the um, checking the health of the kids, if you are just using that, when the body is actually lacking of nutrients, the height is stunted and the weight loss is actually present. So that actually doesn't tell much on the uh, good picture of the nutritional status of the kids. So to measure that for kids, we need to measure the BMI and use with the basis of predicted height for age. And our target is within 5th to 95th percentile. For age children with a more than 95th percentile, it is considered overweight. And for those less than 5th percentile, it is called underweight. So how to maintain our weight? It is achieved when our calorie intake for food and beverages is balanced with the energy calorie expenditure through the body functions and physical activity. When it comes to concern about body weight and uh, uh, body image, many people try to achieve that through various weight management diet plan. So some of that that's popularly you know, popular and being discussed are uh, intermittent fasting diet. So what is this intermittent fasting? This group of people, they choose to fast 16 hours in a day and they eat only at the remaining eight hours. Then the other choice is actually eating 500 calories in two days in a week and the rest of the five days they consume the normal calories. Intermittent fasting does help us to lose weight if it is being calculated uh, well and actually make sure that all the food groups are actually fulfilled. So uh, as well as the calorie counting diet, by counting the calories through the website or the apps that have been created, we would know how much calorie being ingested and how much is required to actually reduce body weight. Normally, we need to achieve a calorie deficit. It does help us to lose weight, but we have to make sure that all the food components are being fulfilled. What about low carb diet? A lot of people are talking about it nowadays. As a dietitian, I would say this is a quick fix diet. Um, this diet actually intend to create the body system where the intake of carbohydrates is very low, less than 10%. I would say less than 50 grams per day, uh, as if less than one bowl of rice per day and then to increase the fat content up to about 70 to 80 percent. And the choices could be from the avocado, from the cream, the fatty cuts of the meat, um, and other high fat food sources with the moderate protein. So this diet creates the body system by imp increasing the ketones in the body, it provides fuel. So the ketones in the body uh, will actually accumulate and to a certain level, if it's too high, can cause ketoacidosis, which is fatal. For a mild symptom of keto diet uh, effects, you may experience some keto flu-like symptoms like headaches, low mood, irritability, um, and then some over some time, you may experience uh, high in uric acid level, high LDL, and also kidney stones formation. Uh, and some may have constipation problem, which is hard to dissolve because the fiber intake is quite low. So for this condition, it is not safe if it's more than probably 12 weeks. Most of the studies done involve a small group of participants and the duration taken is less than 12 weeks. There's no studies uh, done for more than one year, so it is not considered very safe. And I advise you, it is a quick fix and don't go long on it. Okay. 
What about the paleo diet? A lot of Western diets are actually being told that it is linked to Western diseases. So this group of people, they believe that the paleo diet will be the best. What they do is actually they eat something like a hunter-gatherer ancestors diet, everything natural, uh, not so much the processed food. So they don't take cereals, which is processed. What about grains and legumes? They are also processed in terms of milk, which is also processed from the cow. So they do not take all this processed food with the belief that our human body hasn't evolved to digest all the processed food. So when the calories reduce from the sugars, from the fats, with more focus on the protein, the natural sources of the food, they, people actually uh, lose weight. So there are other more convincing, uh, safe methods to manage the body weight. Uh, it has been advocated among the healthcare professionals, such as the low-fat diet, the DASH diet, it is called the dietary approach to stop hypertension, the plant-based diet, and the meal replacement diet. All these diets are actually quite safe because a lot of clinical trials showed that effectiveness. They reduce the fat content to less than 30% of the total calories. You do get fat, but in a low amount because fat serves higher calories as compared to carbohydrate and protein. And the Dutch diet, they promote more fruits and vegetables, which we have to attain about four to five serves of veggies a day and four to five serves of fruit per day, as well as cutting down the sugar and fat. The plant-based diet are also popular nowadays, following by those religious groups and those people who are environmental friendly, they try to reduce the meat products and go for a plant-based diet. If plant-based diets are low in fat in terms of the cooking, it is actually possible to lose weight as well. And the meal replacement diet, we have many information about this from some of the private companies. It is being fixed in terms of calories. They are high in proteins and they are packed with most of the micronutrients, uh, micronutrients for the body to make. So it is actually safe for consumption in the well-planned diet. So these methods of weight loss, they are actually quite safe, they are effective, uh, and it is sustainable. So talk to your healthcare professionals if you want to lose weight in a proper way, in a safe way. Okay? You need to tailor into individual needs based on your lifestyle and your food preferences. So there are also poor eating methods to manage body weight. Uh, I don't think it happens nowadays, but just to share with you, that's in the, in the Google, if you Google it, you can find all this. So the tapeworm tablets were started in 1900 years. That was more than 100 years ago. Okay? So people are taking the tapeworm tablets so that the eggs hacks with the gut system and it stores the nutrients so that we don't feel um, the urge of eating and those nutrients are being stored away anyway so they don't put on weight. What about the cotton ball diet? It's not a diet after all, because it's just cotton ball. So cotton ball is chemically produced, and they actually eat this by uh, soak into the liquid or the soup, and they ingest it so that they feel full with the cotton ball, and they don't ingest other food items. The cotton ball is dangerous because it's not well digested, and it doesn't give us any nutrient at all. The vinegar diet, it was um, started by a person who is good in politics and poem that was in 1820. So he believes that by drinking plenty of vinegar and combined with a cup of tea and a raw egg, um, it creates that uh, effects of nausea because it's just not so palatable. And then they started vomit. So after vomiting, the appetite suppressed. So with that way, they reduce the calorie intake. The Sleeping Beauty diet is not a diet after all, because by sleeping, we don't eat. So this group of people ingesting sedatives and they make sure they sleep throughout the whole day or many hours in the day to reduce the calorie consumption. It is not safe either. What about the secret diet? Surprisingly, it is recommended by doctors in 1920 and because the secret can help to suppress the appetite. 
Um, but nowadays, more and more studies found out that cigarettes are linked to many cancers. So beware. And the cabbage soup diet is recommended uh, with the basis that the intake of meal is probably uh, very little, but you will drink plenty of cabbage soup. And they promise the person will lose five kilograms in a week if they consume the cabbage soup for the whole week. So beware of the nutrients that could be lacking because there's no much variety in this diet. So as well as the baby food diet, and these celebrities in Hollywood, they practice this by drinking 14 jars of baby food and then uh, having just one main meal per day. The calorie is restricted, of course, the calorie deficit, but then it doesn't help in the long term because baby's nutrients requirement is different from the adult's nutrients requirement. Last but not least is about the slimming soap. Okay, trust me, the slimming soap is not able to penetrate into your body cells and burn your fat. It's only burning your pocket. Okay, so be careful of all the diet plan that we try to adopt at this moment. Mental and physical health, it requires adequate intake of all nutrients. Inadequate calories in general, it leads to medical conditions. Sometimes without our realization, we might we must have we might have probably practiced certain eating habits that's probably not so normal and that could lead to medical conditions such as anorexia nervosa, the bulimia nervosa, or the binge eating disorder. Anorexia nervosa, like the picture of this lady, she's actually uh, having obsessive obsessive fear of gaining weight. She refused to eat although she's already very low in weight, with BMI less than 17.5. They have a wrong perception towards their body image, and they do not uh, recognize the seriousness on this. So they may actually vomit out the food they eat. They probably go to toilets more often after eating uh, episodes. What about bulimia nervosa? They may have normal body weight, but this group of people, um, they will have the episodes of binge eating, eating a lot of food and followed by the compensatory behaviors uh, through uh, probably self-vomiting. They induce the vomiting by dig the throat so that the food can come out or they use laxatives or having extreme exercise. So by doing that, they try to keep their weight low. And the binge eating disorder is another type of uh, eating habits which is abnormal. So this group of people, they may have the binge eating habits for once uh, a week and then at least once a week and that lasts for three months. So they feel uh, the sense of guilt by overeating and they're having lack of control mentally. So there are also other specific feeding uh, and eating disorder which having some criteria but not fulfilling all the criteria of AN, BN and BED. So the medical conditions that may result from these eating patterns, it may be a lot actually, just to name a few, like dehydration, the low electrolytes, the heart muscle is not being able to pump blood to the whole body system, the inflammations of the muscles, they may have irregular menstrual uh, period, they may have low bone mineral density and leads to osteoporosis, mood symptoms, very moody, suicidal thoughts or constipation, uh, as well as hypercholesterolemia due to decreased bowel acid secretion and some of the physical problems like vomiting related uh, esophagitis and the dental erosions. There are some uh, symptoms could be irreversible, especially when it happens in the teenage group. It can cause growth retardation, the cognitive impairments such as forgetfulness, or probably not able to reason or uh, planning and also solve the problem and they may have impact judgment as well. So not to say about the bones problems, the osteoporosis and osteopenia. So how could the dietitian assist? Dietitian will help a person to monitor their body composition by measure their weight and height, plotting growth chart for kids and then calculate BMI and then attain the mutual understanding of healthy weight and body composition. 
We'll normally do a food assessment by using the food diary to check and identify the below issues, such as the rate of weight loss, recent change in eating habits, binge eating pattern, vomiting and lensative misuse, what about gut function, hydration status, any addictions towards alcohol and caffeine, or use of vitamin supplements, or restrict intake of variety of acceptable food, and the presence of condition that may require dietary management, especially for type 1 diabetes. The nutritional intervention is required, especially for a long history of anorexia nervosa, the BMI of at least 15 kg per meter squared is required to allow some quality of life and prevent hospital admission. And the diet planning should focus on stable intake of carbohydrates, adequate intake of protein, adequate intake of essential fatty acids, adequate intake of nutrients to support bone mineral density, the iron and zinc for non-meat eaters, vitamins and mineral supplementation, as well as liquid nutritional supplements may be required. And we also need to discuss normal eating behaviors and attitudes to food by motivational interviewing. And of course, close monitoring and evaluation is required. Okay, it is very hard to change the mindset of a person uh, if it is already fixed. Okay, I actually totally agree with the blog post by Becky saying that the 41 Forbidden foods encourages binge eating and it can make food like an idol as forbidden food doesn't teach moderation. So moderation is still the key. There's no food that someone cannot eat totally, uh, but we have to be aware where we indulge in certain food. We may claim to know better than the healthcare professionals. We may self-impose forbidden or feared foods and you may also wish to keep this private and confidential. So we are here for you uh, when you're ready to change. Okay, let us be together and we can discuss a plan that help you to achieve holistic approach in terms of your health. Okay, thank you for your attention. And now I would like to pass the microphone to the team. Hi everyone, yeah, uh, it's Dr. Wee here, yeah, so uh, before I start, then just want to wish everyone Happy Chinese New Year, and then of course, I mean, in this period, although vaccines already like available today, uh, PM already like inject himself today, and then, uh, but yet, we uh, we still like not, not free of this uh, COVID-19 yet, yeah, so everyone have to stay safe, okay, back to today's topic about eating disorder. Yeah, uh, uh, Miss Fei, I just now already like, mentioned a lot of things regarding uh, uh, diets uh, as well as some uh, area of like eating disorder. Yeah, uh, I don't have many slides. Yeah, just few slides to share with you all and to elaborate a bit uh, on the eating disorder as well as discuss a bit on uh, the management of eating disorder in the view of psychiatry. Yeah, okay. Okay, so basically what is eating disorder is a condition that patients who have like irregular eating habits as well as stress about the body weight and shape. Basically mismatch, uh, mismatch between what a person need like to eat uh, 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 compared to what he, he or she eat. Yeah? Uh, uh, whether he eat too much or whether he eat too little compared to what he need to eat as well as concern about like the body weight. Uh, someone who already actually thin uh, but still like uh, uh, think that he uh, she is uh, 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 fat. Yeah? So that kind of like mismatch uh, in terms of like the thinking yeah? is an uh, important symptom of eating disorder. There's actually many types of eating disorder. If you look into the books, there's a lot of a lot of different different type of eating disorder. I just list down few here, a uh, uh, few types of eating disorder uh, 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 that uh, is a bit more commonly seen. Yeah, but I can say that in 
general, eating disorder is actually not not uh, very common. Yeah, if we compare like to depression, if we compare to anxiety, eating disorder is not as common. Yeah, but uh, 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 these five types of eating disorder is among like the more common type of eating disorder that we see. Yeah, pika basically means that those who who eat uh, uh, things that cannot be eaten. Yeah, some patients who I mean, who have pika of like uh, taking rubber material. Yeah, rubber material not supposed like, to be eaten. Yeah, but patient with pika will eat rubber material, for example. Yeah, uh, uh, rumination disorder is a condition that uh, patient regurgitate back the food that uh, swallowed and then chewing and then swallow again. Yeah. Uh, 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 avoidance or restriction of food intake, you know, avoid to take food, yeah, but not much uh, concern about like, the body weight. Of course, when you when you avoid or when you restrict food, the body weight will will reduce by itself, yeah. But uh, 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 in avoidance of food restrictions, uh, then then uh, the the thinking is like not much related to I want like to become thin, yeah. Compared to anorexia, anorexia I will explain in more detail later. Yeah, uh, bulimia will be like more related to uh, binge. Yeah, uh, not much of like weight changes. Yeah, but there's a lot of like binge eating. Yeah, uh, 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 excessive exercise and so on. Yeah, uh, in bulimia. Okay, okay. Anorexia nervosa, which is I will say the most common reason of patient being brought to see a psychiatry in term of like diagnosis of eating disorder. Yeah, uh, patient have uh uh I mean wrong thinking about like think that uh she is like too fat, which is actually she is already like very thin. Yeah, and then uh she will continue by finding ways like to lose weight some more. So that that mismatch of like uh uh feel like the the mismatch of like body image as well as mismatch of like the food intake then will will further deteriorate the conditions. It's actually anorexia is actually a very dangerous condition. Uh, the malnutrition as what Miss I uh, just now explained. Yeah, that one can be like uh ketosis happen and then it can be like dangerous and then it can it can uh take away the life actually. Yeah. So, uh, uh, it's a serious condition. But m- some of my anorexia nervosa patients, they do understand that they're not supposed like, to continue losing weight. They have the knowledge, they read, they have the knowledge that normal BMI is like seven, at least like 17. Yeah? Uh, 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 but but they, they cannot control. They cannot control the urge of like one like to reduce their weight further. Yeah, even when when they know that okay, my minimum weight is forty kilo, but I just feel like forty kilo is like too heavy for me. I by hook or by crook, I want thirty kilo. And that kind of like thinking sometimes uh uh come in patients who have anorexia nervosa. Yeah, so what happened in this patient will be like of course there's two types. Yeah, what is a re- restricting type? Yeah, this patient will be like restrict themselves from eating. I do have patients who take one biscuit in the whole day without any other food. Yeah. Uh, uh, they, I mean she restricts I mean uh, 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 strongly, I mean like the urge of like taking any food. Yeah? But a- another group of patients will be like binge eating and purging. Yeah? They eat, then after that they go like to toilet for me that out, or sometimes they take laxative uh, to make them have a diarrhea, uh, so that like to lose out what they already like, taken. Yeah? So these are two uh, type of anorexia nervosa. Okay, severity a lot of time it depends on the BMI. Mild will be like BMI uh, 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 about seventeen, uh, less than seventeen we will see a moderate, yeah. Then uh, severe and extreme, yeah. Depend on the BMI. Treatment, uh, uh, there's two forms of treatment in terms of like, uh, 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 anorexia or any form of eating disorder, uh, medications, uh, as well as psychotropy. Yeah. Some patients or some family did ask uh, how the medication is able to help uh, in eating disorder. If you see, as what I uh, explained just now, a lot of patients with the eating disorder, there is a mis- match in terms of their thinking, uh, the logic part of their their thinking as well as what they want uh, uh, to achieve. 
uh, the logic part or the intellectual part say that oh they need like to have like sub I mean certain weight, but the 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 uh, what I mean they are forced belief or they they they, they still I like, feel like they still I like, still like believe that they need like to be lower than that, uh against their their intellectual uh, uh part of thinking yeah, what caused this? Uh, there's no actually uh, exact uh, 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 I mean uh, causes that being identified of like causing this kind of like thought yeah but we can understand in general is like in the brain there is a lot of like chemical in the brain that connect between the nerve cell and another nerve cell if there is no this chemical or what we call neurotransmitter the nerve cell did not connect to each other and then uh, 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 thinking will have like problem. When the thinking have problem means that it, in, it include the condition of like what we call delusion, means like false belief, although already thin, but still believe that uh, she is fat, for example. Yeah? Uh, 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 then medication will have the role uh, to stabilize the chemical in the brain uh, so that the, the nerve cell can talk to each other more efficiently. Yeah? So that the patient can think uh, more rationally and then can suppress all those thoughts, which is like a uh, wrong, wrong thought. Yeah? Uh, besides medication, psychotherapy treatment also, uh, I would say, is mandatory yeah, to help the patient to tackle the negative thought, which they know that, I mean, uh, which we know that that is not, not some, not true, not logic kind of like thinking, yeah. Uh, in psychotherapy, we help the patient like how like to overcome the thought as well as teach the patient some relaxation exercise uh, 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 because, I mean, uh, in the process of challenging the thought, uh, patient will get very anxious as well, yeah. So, uh, uh, all this treatment uh, will help. Uh, of course, I mean family. I mean, family support uh, as well as a friend support uh, will be very important also uh, in in the whole process of treatment. Yeah. With that, I end my talk here. Uh, if like there's any questions, uh, uh, please feel free like to ask. Then I will try my best like, to answer. Thank you. Where's the question? I can't see the question. Um, yeah, probably Dr. Wee, uh, uh, Dr. Wee, just now you mentioned something about the cause. Uh, the first question that I have here is uh, uh, what can cause someone to develop an eating disorder? So just now that you said there's no cause on it, probably it's the brain cells and neurotransmitter function. Yeah, Is there yeah. any possibility that you could see from your load of patients? I, I I will I will say that is uh, a lot of like cause that can be what what we can postulate, but there's no definite cause that we can like identify, which is like can be like corrected and all all things will be like solved. Yeah, uh, 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 I do have patients that who so passionate with uh, uh artists uh, certain artists who who is like so thin and then uh, she want like to be as thin as that artist, but the the concept the perception of that patient is still like. I mean something like very extreme. Uh, uh, even like she will have like the thought of like I want like to be like thinner than than the the artist and that kind of like thinking. Yeah. Uh, 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 some some patients uh which we, we come across also in in their childhood uh, uh they are actually very chubby kind of like persons and then continue being like humiliated or or uh, uh giving names by the friends yeah. Uh, 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 then slowly uh, she will develop this kind of like I mean uh, uh, thinking of like I want like to be thin and then thinner then thinner and thinner and then get into this kind of like eating disorder yeah uh, in, in general I would say it's a, it's a multiple causes uh, 
multiple causes, yeah, but the exact causes actually we are not sure. It can be, of course, I mean due to due to the stress, yeah. Uh, but uh, it also can be due to the chemical imbalance in the brain that that causing all these things, yeah. So the second question is on how does a person distinguish between unhealthy eating habits and an abnormal eating habit? Okay. Um, yeah, I've mentioned about that some of the eating habits just now, uh, as long as the eating habits itself, uh, based on the lifestyle the person adopted to, uh, working probably normal shift or some working night shift, those eating habits that's developed may include all the food groups in the diet plan. And normally we need about three hours uh, to digest our meals uh, that we have ingested. So it is like having uh, meals of about three hours in a part and then with the common uh, portion size of the meals, which is uh, moderate, uh, not too large in amount at one time, not so-called like binge eating, uh, and then filling all the food groups that we uh, have to cover, like the carbohydrate-rich food groups, the protein-rich food groups, the vegetables and fruits which providing us fiber and the milk fruit groups which is giving us the calcium and by drinking enough water as well as some oil to be added in the meal plan. So if these eating habits is uh, leading to a good body uh, compositions like what we mentioned just now, the first screening is by BMI. And for the kids, we are plotting the growth chart. So if the growth is going into a normal pattern, then uh, I would say the Per person is actually eating normally, okay, or eating healthily. So the abnormal eating habit just now uh, mentioned by Dr. Wee also, uh, the binge eating or after eating feeling guilt or purge it out. So all these are a little bit abnormal. Okay, would it be safe to take soya protein? Someone is asking. Uh, yes, yes, it is safe for someone to take soya protein. Uh, uh, we mentioned about the protein food groups just now. The protein can come from both plant and also animal. Uh, the soya protein is under plant soya protein. Um, uh, we get it from the pure soya bean itself, like but we can blend it into soya milk. And we also get it from the soya protein isolate, which is being produced in the uh, food industry. So both are actually giving us a good source of protein. I don't see any wrong of taking soya protein. There's a question on how do we prevent stress eating? When we stress, we tend to eat a lot. I think I will let Dr. Wee answer the discussion. Okay. How to prevent I mean, uh, uh, eat, eating too much when, when you are stressed? So I, I think there's no... Uh, I mean, there's no direct answer to that. Still, like need like to solve the the stress condition. It's not just like look at the look at the eating. Yeah, uh, easy way like to say is that like, you don't you don't make it available at home la. Means that like, you don't keep like too much of junk food at home and so on. Then uh, uh, uh then of course that one is like you can prevent overeating when you are stressful. But but my view will be like if you find that I mean you have that easily stress up or even like having depression or anxiety, I, I will think that we need like to treat, we need like to address the, the stress, the anxiety or depression. It's not just like look at like how like to uh, avoid overeating. Yeah. Okay. Go back to like the questions here. It will be like, as a family or friends, how can I help someone who has an eating disorder? I would think, I mean, uh, supportive, being supportive. Yeah. Uh, uh, give insight uh, uh, to to the patients. I mean, tell the patients about like what is actually. I mean, uh, 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 her condition of uh, not. I mean, she's not uh, uh, fat. I mean, she's. I mean, uh, uh, the the weight is like coming down more than normal. Something like we we remind 
we remind her on that. But but most important is that before we can like talk to talk to uh, 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 someone who have eating disorder, ourselves need like to be calm first. Yeah, if we didn't calm ourselves, whatever things that we are talk, I mean what. Everything that we want like to pass, whatever message that we want like to pass to that individual will not be accepted. Yeah? So most of the most of the times is that family member will get very agitated when when one time said, I mean the patient would not listening, second time will be like more angry, third time will be more and more angry, right? But we have to understand that if we didn't control our emotions well, then not possible for us like, to influence uh, uh, the patients like to see what is actually uh, wrong and then to change that the way uh, she she behave yeah okay and then of course I mean if like possible we we'll be like need like to bring for for treatment yeah? for uh, 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 to see whether psychiatrists or psychologists uh, to help uh, uh, in in the in the uh, eating disorder, uh, many of the time I will refer the patient to to dietitian as well, uh, for for her like to be educated regarding what is a proper food that that she she need like to take. Yeah, okay, okay. Next question here will be like if I suspect my family members is facing issue with their eating habit. Uh, when is the best time to consult a doctor? I will say first is that you need to talk to him or her, yeah, and then uh, uh, give some insight, uh, uh, as a, I mean, uh, uh, something like what you observe, yeah, uh, uh, if like he or she uh, agree and then slowly can change the way that he he eat, then then I will, I would think not a problem, yeah. But when you see that uh, you already try your best like, to, to counsel or to, to advise uh, uh, that person and is not really like, able like, to, to accept, yeah? or I mean you see other features like the patient started like, to have because sometimes eating this is sometimes it's not eating disorder, but it can be like a depression, for example, or or, or uh, some other serious mental illness, for example, that patient presented with like not eating. Yeah. I do have patients that come uh not eating because uh, uh he believed that the 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 family members is putting poison into into his food. That that is not eating disorder. That is another kind of like mental illness, yeah. So uh that kind of condition you can find that when the advice not working. Then then for if like the advice of a like, family member is not working, then I will still I will still suggest you bring for a professional uh assessment. Yeah. Okay. Can we go to the next question? Uh, sorry, Doctor, we would like to answer to a question posted by someone who says, uh yeah, this is Daniel. Thank you for your question. Uh he asks whether can I suggest the best way to identify diet that's suitable to his body. Uh thanks, uh. Okay, I would say it's best to see a doctor and then after that get referred to see a dietitian and then we will help him uh in planning the diet that suits his body. Okay. How about we eat only oats? Yeah. Uh, I think the first message uh, from the Ministry of Health is very clear. It is to say that we have to eat variety kind of foods because foods are full of nutrients. Different food groups give us different nutrients. Even though if we eat uh, fruits like apple every day, it is good for us, but it will be better if we actually change to sometimes orange, papaya, uh, and other type of fruits uh, like grapes because there are so many phytochemicals in the fruits. So just like oats, you will get better glucans, uh, the soluble fiber in oats, but you do get some other insoluble fibers from other whole grain sources like brown rice. So it is better to eat a quite a wide a range of food group, uh, foods from the same food groups. So oats belongs to carbohydrate food groups. So apart from the oats, there'll be brown rice, will be uh, noodles, pasta, or could be whole grain pasta, vermicelli, you know, many types and breads as well. Um, which is made from the wheat flour. So there are many types of carbohydrate foods that you could consume, not only oats. I thought it would be very boring to eat oats every day, right? Um, just now, Dr. Wee mentioned about uh, the child uh, when they are being, you know, probably commented by their probably peers in school that may actually lead to eating disorder. So uh, probably I would like to also ask Dr. Wee, is there any preventive precaution uh, to help a child cope with their mental stress 
before the poor eating habits begin to develop. To help a child, actually, is like uh, uh, of course, I mean, it, it, it cannot be like it cannot be like we wait until the problem arises, then then only we want like to uh, uh, treat, yeah, and then uh, which I will still say that prevention is is better, yeah. So uh, I mean, as a parents, I will say that show uh, your children's uh, 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 good. I mean, I mean, way of like thinking, good way of like how you handle your stress, yeah. Uh, uh, prepare your child when your child want like to go to school. Uh, 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 uh sometimes uh, name calling and uh, a bit of bullying uh, may happen in school, yeah. Uh, uh, um, help your child uh, of like how like to uh defense means that how like to I mean like protect themselves, yeah. Not aggressive way, of course, not aggressive way, but uh, 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 protect themselves in a correct way, yeah. But of course, when you see that the child is not able like to, to cope with the stress, then you may you may need like to talk to the child what is the the things that stress the child, uh, uh most, yeah. Uh, many many times is like, uh, perceived stress and observed stress is different. Yeah, some parents say that I never give stress to my child. Yeah, I never force him like to studies, but uh, the child may perceive differently. Yeah, uh, uh, if the child perceive it is a stressful, that is something like need like to be tackled. Yeah. If you continue talking like a general at home, yeah, uh, 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 then you expect your child to not feeling stressed up. Uh, I think that is, that is something not not possible. Yeah, if your wife give uh a opinion to you, for example, say that hey, the way that you are talking is like not that good. Then then probably it will be a sign that oh okay, probably you need to change your tone of voice, the way that you communicate with the child and so on. Yeah. Because problem always start with uh, a small, I mean before it go big, yeah. If we can identify the the problem or the 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 uh uh poor communication skill at an early age, then I would think uh, we can prevent all this kind of stress, including causing uh, eating habit. But uh, when we see that, I mean, the child already like at the conditions of like having uh, eating problem, or eating disorder, or any form of like stress, I will still, I will still advise if you, if you didn't, I mean, the duration, yeah, I mean, if you didn't see uh, improvement and then the condition get deteriorate. Uh, shouldn't wait for too long. Duration is important. Yeah, then you need like, to bring your child for, for professional help. Yeah. Okay. So I think with that I end the sessions. Yeah. Uh. 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 uh is in general eating disorder is is not is not a very common condition, but. I will say it's a dangerous condition if it is not uh, being treated. Yeah, I do have like some patients that who who need like to be admitted uh, in the ward because of like severe malnutrition as well. Uh, so uh, uh, we need like to to take care of these patients. Yeah, Miss Fei, I any last words? Okay, thank you so much for spending your time with us this afternoon. Uh, we hope that everyone uh, may stay healthy uh, throughout this period of time. Uh, it is COVID time and we are mostly staying at home. So get as much information as you get, uh, you can about healthy eating habits and try to follow that through. Uh, some actually, uh, this morning, uh, our doctor, the surgeon, Mr. Wong, actually shared with me about his diet plan and also his lifestyle. He actually did some exercise during this period and he managed to actually develop some of the muscles uh, the you know, improve the limb body mass of the body. So um, make full use of the time when you're actually at home, okay? Uh, stay healthy at all times so that we can fight for this virus. Hopefully everything can go over soon and uh, we'll be back to a normal lifestyle. So uh, wish everyone a happy uh, ox year ahead. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.